Hey there, I'm Andrew, you're watching That Gamer Ajax, and welcome to the first impressions that I have after reading through the book for Thirsty Sword Lesbians, a tabletop role-playing game that uses the Powered by the Apocalypse system that I think is honestly going to be a absolute blast and ton of fun to play with the group that I'm currently working on putting together. So let me just go ahead and start out by saying that I don't think that I was actually the target demographic for this book, but I have fallen in love with it regardless. You know, I am a straight white man and this is a game for Thirsty Sword Lesbians. I personally, I'm already in love with this book. Uh, I picked it up in a bundle. I think that the art style is very vibrant and it seems like it would be very, very accessible, particularly for new players. So from my understanding of the Powered by the Apocalypse games, they are usually relatively simple to run. All you do as a player is that you roll two six-sided dice and then depending on the number that you get, various effects happen. Usually if you get a six or lower, something not so great happens. If you get a seven to nine, something, something good happens and something bad happens. And if you get a 10 or higher, then usually you get mostly good things with one small trade-off. Because of this, I think that there are going to be a lot of really awesome roleplay moments that I'm going to be able to have for my players, and I'm very, very excited for that, especially because it, no matter what, it doesn't seem like there's always going to be a guaranteed success that something might always happen, no matter what. And that I'm going to thrive on as a game master. So what makes this game stand out compared to others? Personally, I really love the aesthetic of this. I think that it has very vibrant art styles. I think it has really awesome uh, archetypes for your players to embrace. You have a wide variety of archetypes for your players to kind of embrace and really make their own, such as the beast, which might be kind of like a were person, for example, or was kind of like raised between two kinds of worlds. You have the nature witch, which is a little bit, you know, more shy, a little more reclusive, and I can already see this fitting into some people that I want to play the game with. You have things like the devoted, who are willing to put themselves on the line for others, but they always have their all kinds of internal struggles. And that's something that I really like about this book. What's really cool is that it really just lays out good examples archetypes you know the nature witch that we just mentioned you know one of the examples that it throws out that players could try to embrace is being you know the oblivious horse girl as one quick example along with this there are example aesthetics that way if you have players that are new to playing tabletop games it kind of gives them a little bit of a template that they can pull from and then they can also make it entirely their own the game really encourages you to do that another thing that i really like about thirsty sword lesbians at least just based on what i've read is the fact that it is very very adamant about the use of safety tools as I've been growing as a game master, this is something that I really enjoy using and it's something that I feel makes my tables a lot safer to play at. And I think it's great. It actually rewards players for checking in with each other because of the overall nature of Thirsty Sword Lesbians, because this is a game that does seem to really encourage you to flirt with your friends while you are playing taking a moment to check in make sure that everything is okay and that that's, you're not crossing a line and the fact that players get rewarded for that, I think is absolutely phenomenal. I love that. And also, I just think that like the way that this game is set up, it seems like it'd be good for either running, you know, little one-offs or short campaigns if you want. The only thing that I would have a little bit of an issue with was is just that like, it seems like it'd be very easy to kind of like retire your character or in this case, give them a happily ever after, um, after they hit a certain experience threshold. Now I will fully admit, I have not played any of the power by the apocalypse games yet or ones that use its system it's one that i'm trying to branch out into i know it's on the more popular side of things and this seems to be a very good way for me to get started another thing that i have found that i really enjoy just with my initial read through granted i have not played the game yet it is going to be coming in soon is the fact that there are incentives for players to check in with each other through the use of skills such as uh, emotional support i love this i think that it can really encourage people to dive into the role play aspects of this game. And this seems to be a lot. Now, when it comes to somebody that's probably a little bit more used to something like D&D, &D, you might be a little off put with kind of how rules like this is. There's a lot of ways to be uh, open to interpretation. So if you are gonna be a game master and you're interested in running a game such as this, just make sure that you are a little prepared and you're willing to kind of talk with your players on how things get done. The rule system seems to be that you can kind of come up with things on the fly, that you can be, you have to be willing to adjust and make all kinds of changes at any given moment. So I can see this one being a little bit more prep intensive for a game master. So just keep that in mind if this is a game that you feel like picking up and checking out. Is this game going to be for everybody? No, I will fully admit that it's not. I know that it's one that I'm personally very excited for and I don't really know what else to say other than I have absolutely fallen in love with this game. The style of the book is phenomenal. Um, I wish that I had a physical copy of it and currently I only have a digital one, but I think that this could be a really fun game for groups of people that it's, it's a little bit more aimed towards. Uh, it's not going to be everybody's cup of tea, but then again, every single tabletop game out there, it's not really going to be for everybody. 
So let's go ahead and get a bit of a conversation going. Have you heard of Thirsty Sword Lesbians? Have you played it? Is this a game that you would even be interested in picking up? Now, I will say, because I have not played the game yet, if you want to learn a little bit more, I know that there are some resources out there. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to link a video to the Dungeon Noobs Guide. I think that he has done a phenomenal job kind of highlighting how this system works. He has two videos on it, and one of them is an actual play and learn where he takes players that haven't played it before and are trying it out for the first time. But that is where I'm going to go ahead and cut off this video. I hope that you enjoyed it. If you like it, give it a thumbs up. If you're interested in seeing a little bit more on what I do here on the channel, please consider subscribing. But hey, until next time, See you in the next video. Bye-bye.